Good afternoon, Paul. <clears throat> Happy to round out the day, uh, this afternoon's uh, presentations. So our paper is entitled Starting Where the Children Are, a Process Evaluation of the MTB Emily Imp Implementation in the Philippines. Um, here's a um, structure of the presentation. I will do a little <coughs> background because I understand we're uh, pressed for time. And then we also uh, will look at the process evaluation and then findings and discussion. So the big picture, so how pupils learn languages and how policy makers formulate language policies complicate educational outcomes. And then how teachers, administrators, and parents with their own individual linguistic biases understand and support language policies further complicate educational outcomes, right? So first, what is MTB MLE? So this is classroom instruction that begins in children's mother tongue and then gradually shifts toward national and or international languages as ch uh, children advance through primary education. Uh, but only after a solid literacy foundation is established in children's native language. This was from Jacob 2016. Um, from the DepEd, MTB MLE is defined as the effective use of more than two languages for literacy and instruction. So how is mother tongue um, defined? So I took from 1953 UNESCO's uh, 1953 definition that the mother tongue is that language that a person has been exposed to from birth or within the critical period, what one knows best, what one uses often, and and also is identified as a speaker of by the community. So why MTB MLE, right? So um, as you know, if uh, of course we know our language policy from 1901, it has always been, you know, English only and then bilingual. It was in 19, in 2009 when we had the MTB MLE. Um, through DO 74. So that kind of um, echoes the belief of UNESCO in 1953. They believe that learners, um, I mean, learning is best achieved by two short jumps. That is from illiteracy to literacy in the mother tongue and from literacy in the mother tongue to literacy in a second language. Then the one long jump of illiteracy to literacy in the second language. So what we, so the, we did a process evaluation of the MTB MLE program with Sir Orbeta, with Ma'am Chris um, Abrigo and Ma'am Capones, right? Sorry. So we also subscribed to this theory of change that th this, uh, these are our output, uh, inputs um, of course, we have activities, output, preliminary outcomes, and the final outcomes that um, the, the program is supposed to have would be the following. For example, improved reading scores, improved comprehension tests, higher completion rates, less dropouts, et cetera, et cetera. So but when we did the process evaluation, we adopted uh, DEPED's typology. So we selected um, samples from public and private, small, medium, large schools, urban and rural, and we uh, had additional classification of linguistically diverse contexts. We'll talk about this a little bit more in the um, following slides. So, okay, so this is like linguistic diversity. So we define this as, uh, this refers to the number of languages present and the evenness of distribution of mother tongue speakers among languages in a given area. So we looked at the language diversity index, right? So the closer the index is to one, the linguistically diverse or multilingual the community is, and the closer the index is to zero, the less linguistically diverse monolingual or monolingual the community is. So we wanted to have a balance of uh, linguistically diverse and less linguistically diverse uh, communities because we, we sort of thought that uh, the diversity, the multilingual nature of communities will definitely impact the implementation of the MTB MLE. So we selected provinces from each island cluster of uh, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao by looking at their res respective LDIs. So we took it from this 
thinking machines data science based on a language diversity index per province enumerated in the language landscape of the Philippines in four maps. So, ang ginawa po namin, we, uh, we considered um, provinces with more than 0.5 uh, as classified as linguistically diverse contexts and less than that, LLDCs. So here's a um, visual illustration of the diversity, uh, language, uh, language diversity in the Philippines. So uh, the more colorful it is, uh, the more uh, diverse, right? So here's our sampling strategy. So we selected uh, from school size, there's one small in Luzon, besides in Mindanao, one medium in those regions as well, and one large from, I mean, sorry, island clusters. And also for LLDCs, we had the same for a total of 18 schools. So, of course, um, 18 schools out of um, over 51,000 is very, is minuscule, but uh, we managed to um, support it with a survey. Okay, so been repeated. So I don't know if uh, this is okay to show, but here are our schools. So we used we had four instruments. We used um, structured FGD or KII questionnaires. So it's supposed to generate data on program theory and rationale, service delivery and utilization challenges, and information on organization. We also collected um, data on number of children in school, length of residence of parents, subjects taught, le length of service of teachers and administrators, and highest educational attainment of teachers as well, and also length, uh, yeah, length of service and highest educational attainment. I'm sorry for the error there. We also conducted a little bit of um, classroom observation where we wanted to find out how, how many languages are being used inside the classrooms, um, pupils' extent of participation. We're basically listening in on the, the subjects and we're listening to the students. And then we wanted to find, it, find out also whether or not textbooks are available or are being used, et cetera. Um, also, the online quick survey form um, this generated data on number of schools implementing and not implementing the MTB MLE, and we wanted to find out also the reasons for non-implementation. We, we wanted to find out also what languages are being used as uh, MTs, mother tongues, and also activities being done in specific localities. Right? Sorry, so a little bit of descriptive statistics here. So in, uh, there's a total of um, 270 participants <coughs> composed of 120 parents, 129 teachers, and 21 administrators uh, all over the Philippines. Okay, so this particular table you would find um, <coughs> Parents, so we selected the parents of uh, K to three because the MTB MLE only caters to kinder until grade three. So here are a few numbers. Okay, we wanted also to break them down in terms of uh, how many parents have one child, two children, etc. And then we also looked at uh, the teachers' um, educational attainment. So as you would. Um, you would look at, uh, you'd find in these numbers, um, they cluster, a lot of our respondents, participants have master's degree. They compose 64.3% of the total population. So this is the online quick survey. Um, we wanted to, because we understand that only 18 schools were limited by the budget, so we can only go to 18 schools spread over the Philippines. So. Um, Sir Orbeta thought it would be best to have to collect um, survey via online and um, we kind of succeeded because um, we have 
we managed to get um, responses from 1,865 schools. That, that's, of course, really minuscule compared to over uh, the total of 51,147. But you'd find that there are certain regions that are very energetic in responding to our uh, study. For example, in Region 2 yeah, and uh, Region 4A. And there were also regions where there's zero participation. Okay, so the response rates, all right. Um, region one has the highest reporting rate of 59% and region nine with, uh, armed with 2.2%. Okay, so we found out the number of schools implementing the MTB MLE. So, for example, so we, we asked them, are you implementing uh, the MTB MLE? So, as you can see, the yes, um, we had 15, over 15,000, but there were also few that said they were, they're not implementing it. And that's both for both public, private uh, schools. Right, so. What, are, what were the reasons why schools were not implementing the MTB MLE? So, teachers lack relevant teaching materials. That's 18% um, uh, the bulk of the responses. Of course, you also have school does not have the dictionary of the language, so they had problems with, um, with the mother tongues because they don't have the dictionary, they don't have the grammar book, etc. And um, there were also reports that the school does not get support from the central office, division office, so you have 2%. Okay, the MOI, what is the MOI? This is the medium of instruction <coughs> being used. So we found out that Tagalog is, uh, has 32%, so that's the MOI being used inside the school and is also the mother tongue of the students, followed by Cebuano. However, there were also these other, uh, there were many other uh, MOIs being employed in schools. So what's interesting for us was that we found out that there were as many as five MOIs being used by a particular school. Um, but of course, um, but it did come out in the online survey. Okay, so we wanted to find out also uh, whether schools have done the four minima, right? Uh, which is crucial for the implementation of the MTB MLE. And um, of the responses, we found that only 9.1% of schools have the entire, have all four minima. So a good percent, 48, almost 49% has done just one. So maybe ito yung big books. Okay, so the minimum activities done in the school implementing MTV MLE, writing big books was the most common. So you have 44%, that's, that's the easy, perhaps, uh, the easiest that they could do, followed by documenting the orthography of the language, documenting the grammar of the language, and um, yeah, and dictionary, coming up with a dictionary of the language. So summary. So the MTB MLE has sound pedagogical foundation and embodies a concept of a learner-centered learner -centered education. However, it is facing difficult implementation challenges and needs to find more effective, efficient, and acceptable ways of impl implementing the program. So for example, under program logic and plausibility, we found that there's a lack of common understanding and wrong appreciation of the basic rationale for the MTB MLE program. Um, some of the things that we picked up from the field was that um, the teachers were unhappy about the additional workload and they were say, and they were also reflecting the uh, dupli sometimes duplication. Parang magtuturo sila ng, ng especially in Manila, magtuturo sila ng, ng Filipino, which is the mother tongue of many students. And then, meron pang may Tagalog, so parang ganon, may, may duplication. 
So the linguistic practices on the ground in terms of language use is far from presumed ideal. If uh, the idea of uh, the MTB MLE is that you begin with the language that's used by students, I mean, uh, by children, no? the, the, the language that they grew up with. In fact, there's not just one language. Sometimes there were several languages being spoken inside the house, right? And, um, but, the, but the design of the MTB MLE is, uh, has this only one mother tongue to which is added the Filipino and the English. So yeah, that's it, the belief that there is only one MT per locality, right? So even when regions are deemed monolingual, like for example in NCR, there were several schools where inside there are many languages because um, students come from all over the Philippines and of course they bring their languages with them. Uh, we also found out that outcomes of war brought displacement, language dispersion. So. Under program logic and plausibility, we recommended to clarify and disseminate the MTB MLE program theory to all stakeholders. Um, so this is really very important for the teachers, right? To, for them to understand um, why the shift to the mother tongue-based multilingual education. Also to reassess the one MT per locality implementation policy. I, I think, um, a few years, uh, yeah, last, last year, DepEd is trying to address this already with the uh, language uh, mapping, right? They wanted to assess how many languages are being spoken so that they can address um, th that need. The theory needs to recognize the, that should be dialectal differences and provide clear guidance on implementing MTB MLE under these conditions. For example, um, we experienced in Samar, the, uh, like textbooks in Warai, um, some people would say, this is not our variety of Warai, this is different from what is being spoken here. So, but the students are all tested on that one variety. Yeah, so that of course brought, uh, is bringing about a lot of uh, dissatis dissatisfaction and unhappiness. Also step up information dissemination of empirical research highlighting the efficacy of learning in the MT. Um, a cursory look at you know, ResearchGate or academia, I, ha I have been seeing that many teachers are already working on, on this, right? So it's only a matter of collecting all of them and then disseminating it to teachers just to uh, beef up you know, the, the literature, the gains that can be made with using MTB MLE as um, foundation for learning languages, for comprehension, and the like. Also encourage knowledge generation of how children le learn many languages at once. For example, um, simultaneous bilingualism, which should inform, refine program theory and delivery of service. So the, the learning of, um, children's learning of, ma of many languages, especially in the Philippines, is really, it's highly contentious, right? And and as teachers, we should probably focus our attention on what exactly happens when children learn languages. Not just one language, but uh, the language of the community as well. And then study the impact of social media on language acquisition and learning and see how best to harness these technological affordances. Under service delivery and utilization, these are our findings. All elements of the program, um, sadly, had not been in place before the rollout of the program. Uh, we saw that there were many um, places where there weren't any textbooks, right? There weren't any books uh, that the teachers could use. And so sometimes their lo lessons were created on the fly, right? Or sometimes the teachers themselves would have to source out materials themselves and use that for teaching kids. Even before the rollout, serious threats to the program, such as lack of of LMs, uh, competent teachers had been pointed out. There was also a case when, in a particular locality, um, some teachers do not speak the language of the community, right? 
It was assumed that administrators and teachers would simply embrace the program because it came from above. So it, this is also one of those um, findings that there was a lot of um, pushback, if I am, might use that term, because, uh, because for, for, for me, reasons that have already been mentioned that it seems to be an additional workload and some of them are not competent, <coughs> etc. And then the MTB Emily program implementation appears to be limited to public schools. Private schools have developed their own version of the program, which is to teach only the MTS, the MTS mother tongue as subject as well. And um, they feel that um, by not using the mother tongue of the community, it is their edge over public schools because they still maintain English as the mother tongue. Uh, as a mother tongue, really, of the of the students, they, when we ask them what is their mother tongue, they would say English because that's being spoken inside the house, and so they like the fact that private schools are not conforming to the MTB MLE. So what they do is they teach the um, mother tongue as a subject, so it's an in a, an addition subject, additional subject to what they have. So our recommendations, step up the creation of localized indigenized, indigenized le learning materials that are quality prepared, reviewed, and constantly updated. Also, to continuously train teachers, whether new hires or veterans, in meaningful seminars. Regularly monitor and evaluate principals and teachers in implementing the MTB Emily program. Implement continuous advocacy work by regional MTB MED focal persons. We, we found out that there ought to be MTB MED focal persons, but it's not, uh, apply, it's not applicable to, to all schools. Some, some, don't have, some schools don't have uh, focal persons. Instill pride and value of languages by making them visible in the landscape of the school. Use mother tongue as a language of assessment in all content areas in K to three. So this idea of instilling pride, we've seen a lot of these um, schools na yung kanilang mga posters, it's in the mother tongue and that's good. However, we have actually encountered uh, one regional office na may malaking sign, uh, English only. So we still have that uh, yeah, throwback from the last century. Sorry. Yes, and um, program organization. Findings, there are issues of procurement and the apparent lack of specific funding support for the MTB Emily related operational activities. So sometimes these um, activities had to compete for funding from the general MOOE of the schools. Also procurement issues have hampered the delivery of learning materials. Um, this is one of the more serious problems. Um, last. Last year, uh, early last year, there were still schools who were complaining that they don't have textbooks. Although the program has presumably been running since 2000, 2009, at least the DO, and in 2012. So 2018, now textbooks. Teachers, for the most part, are adequate in number, but some lack the necessary competence. Um, the schools solved this by encouraging these teachers to go back to their own region where they'd be uh, useful, I suppose. And uh, for some, especially in one region in Surigao, um, teachers are encouraged to learn the mother tongue of the community, even if they don't speak that as their MD. Coordination with other agencies and LGUs are varied. Um, there's a lot of support for MTB Emily uh, in certain places like in Zamboanga, right? The LGU is fully supportive of the MTB MLE. However, it's only for a particular language like Chavacano. And uh, the reason for that is and when we pointed out that there are, there's a big population, for example, for Tausug speakers, uh, we were told that they didn't want to uh, promote um, uh, section, uh, section of place, Chafakano lang, or dito, Tausug lang. So 
pinopromote talaga yung Chavacano for the entire Zamboanga Peninsula. So only a few schools have dedicated focal persons in schools that provide guidance by echoing seminars when there are seminars to echo. So recommendation, uh, designate a fund for MTB ML operational activities, institutionalize the use of language mapping to determine the MOI uh, for K-3 schools. I think the, the DEBED is already doing this. Strengthen dedicated MTB ML focal person at the division level. <coughs> Strengthen synergy between division, district, and schools in terms of best practices, and enlist the help of local governments, particularly in funding the localization efforts. Because I think uh, when LGUs are told how they could be helpful, tumutulog naman sila. That's it, thank you.